Hello and welcome to First Block from Wright and Company. It's one of Detroit's most celebrated restaurants right on Woodward Avenue. Today's show is all about passion projects, what you can accomplish when you're really inspired by something. Well, that theme will bring us back to this restaurant a little bit later in the show. But first, name something so incredibly common that everyone owns them, but some are worth tens of thousands of dollars. It's a commodity so valuable, it's bought and sold every day on its own stock market based right here in Detroit. Give up? Well, look down at your feet. Nick Monticelli has the story. Is it the shoes? That's the question that launched a $1.2 billion industry. It's got to be the shoes. The shoes, 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 shoes. More than 30 years ago, in 1985, Nike released the Air Jordan 1. Retail price, $65. But resale, that's another story. I would definitely give a lot of credit to Michael Jordan. Because, one, he was the first one to have, like, numbered sneakers. It gives you the feeling already that you, you need to collect all of them. Right. But Michael Jordan meant so much to our generation. You wanted to be like Michael Jordan. Because you were jumping higher and running yeah. faster. And I really felt like that when I was little. I thought I was really better because I had those Jordan 6s on. Roland Coit and Rick Williams own Burn Rubber in Royal Oak, Detroit's premier sneaker boutique, and one of a select group of stores across the country where so-called sneakerheads go to find the hottest shoes thanks to their long-standing relationships with brands like Nike and Adidas. We're the tastemakers and we're the movers and the shakers. We have the ability to make something cool to these kids, and we kind of know that, and they know that. That is the primary market. What happens to new sneakers after they leave shops like Burn Rubber is what drew the attention of business mogul Dan Gilbert. Josh Luber was already running a sneaker data company called Campless when Gilbert came calling. I had never been to Detroit before, and I generally had no idea that I was even being recruited. Campless became StockX, a stock market of things, namely sneakers. Originally from Philadelphia, Josh has collected sneakers all his life. I have about I don't know, 300, 350 pairs of sneakers, and maybe 60 or 70 have not been worn, but they're not been worn yet. Uh, I will eventually. And so most of the people who buy sneakers on StockX are going to wear them later. It is an e-commerce marketplace. It is Amazon, it is eBay. It is anywhere where people buy and sell consumer goods, but it operates exactly like a stock market. There are millions of sneaker lovers all over the world, from people who actually wear their finds to collectors who meticulously preserve their pairs. You've heard of Comic-Con. Sneaker-Con conventions across the country draw thousands of collectors. Sneaker culture spawned dozens of blogs, art exhibitions, documentaries, and music. There are celebrity sneakerheads from Jerry Seinfeld to Jason Sudeikis, Nick Cannon to Mark Wahlberg. Some fans are so dedicated, they camp out a week before a big release. I would imagine there are some people who don't give a damn about the sneakers, but know they're worth some cash. Yeah, look, this is a business. Um, there is some large group of people who are only here to make money. And the way to make the most money in the resale sneaker business is really to be able to acquire the sneakers at retail, right? That's the win. If you can buy it at retail price directly, say Kanye West shoe, the Yeezy, that retails for $200 from Adidas and resells for maybe $1,000. So those people, all their energy is really focused on acquiring that sneaker for $200. If they can get that, it's instant arbitrage to be able to flip it for a thousand. If words like arbitrage make you think of financial markets, then you're getting the idea. StockX offers buyers and sellers a number of advantages. You go to eBay right now, you can see thousands of sneaker listings. Here's a sneaker, Sneaker X, selling it for $10,000. But that's what it's listed for. It's not necessarily what someone's paying for it, right? So we started by just figuring out what are people actually paying for something. That level of transparency and what things are actually worth, that's, you see that on the stock market. Now you know, how much did someone pay for this yesterday? How much did they pay for it six months ago? How many pairs are on the market? How many pairs have been sold? How many pairs are sitting there and have not been sold? And then it's just math. Collectors can track the value of their portfolios over time. And in an arena riddled with fakes, StockX experts physically authenticate every pair of shoes. I've seen fake sneakers and it'll be like a stitch a stitch that's not in the right place. And, and like, how are you supposed to be able to tell that? Counterfeits or clone sneakers are very difficult to spot. He was in here like, 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's real. You don't have to worry about it. And I was like, whoa. This is an Air Jordan 4. Um, it's a shoe that never released. It's called an Air Jordan 4 Oregon. It was made uh, exclusively for, for uh, players at the University of Oregon. Because this never released, because it's so rare, this is a shoe that could go for $10,000, $15,000 maybe. But this is a fake. Ironically, this fake sneaker is shinier. It looks better than the real thing. But to a collector, it's worthless. Eminem is a partner and investor in the company and is closely involved in creating content and doing unique things with. And, you know, Wale, who's one of the biggest rappers in the world now, he's been a bigger sneakerhead for way longer than he's been famous. And was so excited to be a part of this that he put the StockX logo on his last mixtape cover, right? On his own, without us asking us for it, without us, just because, you know, he's such a supporter of what we're doing and, and the bigger idea around here. Eminem has collaborated with Nike for years, producing some of the most sought after shoes ever. Brands like Nike and Adidas are experts at figuring out exactly how much limited supply will fuel demand on the resale market. Everything Nike does around Air Jordans is designed to create this hype, to create shoes that are worth more than at retail. And if you're a 12 year old kid, um, like I was and would beg my mother for Jordans and she'd say, no, there's no way we're buying that. Right? But you walk in the store and you need a pair of basketball shoes. Well, then maybe you buy a different Jordan brand shoe, right? So it's about building that overall brand cachet, that overall prestige. It's all part of the ever blurring line between the retail and resale sneaker markets. What was, it used to be a very local and personal thing. You know your sneaker store, you know the people in your neighborhood. It has become very competitive and cutthroat because of how much it's grown and how many people have come into it. There are, are certain sneaker boutiques around the country that everyone knows. If you're in Detroit, you gotta go to Burn Rubber. And it seems as if the brands really support that. And as much as the shoes that, that resell on StockX and the sneakerhead shoes like Jordans and Yeezys, you know, they sell out instantly online at retail at everywhere else. The sneakerhead market is still just a small drop in the bucket compared to the overall athletic shoe market and all the you know millions of pairs that get sold to millions of people. That's why stores like Burn Rubber rely on regular customers, not just sneakerheads. When our regular customer base is passing on all these other things, these other shoes were, were not free. We had to pay for those shoes. So as businessmen, we have to figure out how are we gonna even this back up? Then when this super sought after shoe comes out and I know that you're gonna go sell it for 3,000, why don't I just sell it for 3,000 and then pay the bills for all of these other shoes that you didn't buy? To reward loyal customers, they occasionally hide a hot sneaker in plain sight. We've had dudes come in and look at it like, oh, yeah. man, these, should I get these? Yeah. These don't even look dope. And, and then put it, right, put it right back. But that same shoe was selling online for $3,000. Mm -hmm. And they could have bought it for a but that, But that's of the actually dope because yeah. now you got the purchase. You're getting them because you want them, not okay. because you were trying to flip them. Whether for flipping, wearing, hoarding, or treasuring, sneakers can be a wise investment. Equal part heart and analytics, Josh summed it up in a TED Talk last year. If you had invested in a pair of Air Jordan 3 black cement in 2011, you could either be wearing them on stage or have earned 162% on your money. Double the S&P and 20% more than Apple. And that's why we're talking about sneakers. Thank you. Well, StockX is starting with sneakers, but will expand to other high demand limited edition products in the future, like watches, wine, handbags, and collectible toys. You can find out more information about StockX and Burn Rubber on the first block page at clickondetroit.com.